everybody. Uh, we are going to look today at uh, a method called uh, Glendai Sieb. Okay, it's a method used to uh, categorize value streams. Okay. Categorization of value streams. So basically, uh, what you are going to do, or what we do here, is uh, we look at the uh, percentage of uh, sales volume. do some Pareto on this, okay, so based on the sales volume, we look at our SKUs, SKUs, you know what it is? SKUs, somebody know what it is? SKU uh, means uh, stock Keeping unit, okay. It's just uh, the uh, article article numbers, okay. Just the products that we sell. SKU is uh, the right uh, description. So uh, we do a, a Pareto analysis on the SKUs. Let's say ABC analysis or however you uh, want to call it, okay based on the sales volume and then uh, we also do uh, a uh, Pareto also based on the uh, percentage of uh, product uh, range. Let's say if we have 100 products uh, in our portfolio and we take uh, one class would be like 10% of, of those products, so we would take 10 products, okay? So we make uh, another analysis, another Pareto, based on uh, the product range percentage. We combine both, like uh, maybe you remember the A, B, C, X, Y, Z, Analyse uh, we did uh, a while ago um, and uh, from there you get uh, your categorization, okay? So basically uh, I'm going to paint now the result and later on we do the numbers uh, with an example. Basically what this uh, methodology is telling us is that uh, Let's say here, I'm going to give you a list. Um, this is the percentage uh, of cumulative sales. Okay. And then we have the percentage of product range and uh, if we have here uh, the first 50 percent of our products represent around six percent of our SKUs okay of the total of the products that we have, we only 6% of the product represent 50% of our SKUs, of our, of our sales, sorry. Uh, and this is going to be the green value stream. Of course, we are going to define different management strategies for each of the value streams, okay? So this is the green value stream. Um, From 
50 to 95 percent of our cumulative sales represents around 50 percent of our portfolio and this is going to be the yellow value stream for the different value streams we will have different strategies okay and this is basically the important part of the of the lecture today not the the Pareto I assume you can do the numbers quite easily so from 95 to 99 percent of the of the of the cumulative sales um, you have uh, until 70 percent well let me paint it uh, let me uh, explain it uh, differently uh, 7 to 50 okay percent I think this way can be understood better 51 to 70 percent and this is going to be the uh, blue value stream and uh, the around uh, one percent until 100 okay so from 71 to 100 percent it's around 30 percent of the of the number of SKUs we have the red value stream okay so this is the Glenda sieve this means that uh, when you are provided with a list of SKUs products and their related sales volume the first thing you need to do is run a Pareto on the magnitudes above in order to determine what products belong to each category okay this makes sense let me uh, give you an, a, a real example okay I'm gonna make a picture of the wait of the book one second making a picture of the of the real data set so that you see how basically uh, this happens so here you can I, I will attach it to the PDF now um, one moment okay so uh, this is a real list of real SKUs okay I let me just make it bigger and I'll zoom it in a minute so here you see uh, we can have the uh, let's say um, 
item number, item description, volume, percentage of volume, and cumulative. Okay? And then all the SKUs all along. So once, once you get into a company, the first thing you do, the first thing, okay? Even before you say hello to your colleagues, you try to get a list of all the products in your responsibility, okay? You just run a Pareto on this and tell me what products belong to the green, what products belong to the yellow, what products belong to the blue, and what products belong to the red value stream, okay? Just by, well, in this case we have, uh, I think, uh, oh no, it's it's a bigger list. Wait, l let me put it. Uh, let me let me complete uh, or, or give you all the data. There is more to it, so I'm gonna. This is just one part. I will give you all the data, and if you want to continue with the analysis, you can do it. Wait, there's a second picture. It's a second page. Okay, so um, so you see we have here, uh, we start from uh, number one, okay, of course you don't do this with uh, with a calculator, you do this with uh, Python or something like this, and uh, we have a total of 464 um, SKUs. They are already ordered, and uh, the Pareto is already done for you, so uh, you see the, the, first, uh, the first product takes 7% of the volume, the second product takes 4% of the volume, and so on. Okay, I guess you can read it well. Do you understand what needs to be done? Any questions? Any questions so far, please? Hello? Okay, so are, are, are you there or somebody there? <laughs> yeah, so you have no questions, Christian. It's, is everything fine and crystal? No? Okay, good. Well, then we go to each. So you, you need to physically picture in your mind that all these products go through a factory. Okay, so they all go through the same machines, they all go through the same resources. So it's not just some analysis, you need to picture in your mind that all these products need to be junked into a uh, factory, okay, into value streams. You have the green, you have the yellow, you have the blue, you have the red. And the question the question is, how do we organize our production, our value streams, so that we get uh, an optimum of our uh, facility to get here best results and increased performance, okay? So this is what we're looking for. How do we organize our value stream, our machines, our people, 
and all the things happening and going on there. Um, because this is what you will do next semester, next quarter, when you're in a company, okay? This is what you will be needing to do. You will be having customers or suppliers, and you will be needing to tell them, uh, to tell them uh, what uh, is the best way to organize, okay? I mean, next quarter, you're already in the industry, I hope. That this is the business, okay? How to get this fucking mess organized. I mean, you have 464 different products all going around the factory like crazy. Customers coming and going. And you need to have a strategy on, on how to organize this mess, okay? So, let's focus first on the green. The green category, products, green value stream. I remember, or I remind you here, the numbers, 50% of my sales are taken by 6% of my SKUs. So you cool? This means these are the products that are important. Okay, like your, um, so green category products are high volume items that are already produced in a frequent manner, okay? Frequent basis. These are the products uh, these are the products to start A fixed sequence and fixed volume strategy. Okay? So our strategy with the green is fixed sequence, fixed volume. What we do here is we separate separate the green products and reserve a certain amount of time to manufacture them. You might remember from our previous uh, semesters when we were painting things like this. Product one, then some change over time. Change over time from one to two, then product two, and so on and so forth. You remember?
what if you don't remember take your notes back on okay change over and so on remember or not right yeah I thank you when when we were uh, doing this what we were doing if you if you recall we were uh, creating a production plan okay this is a production plan with what is doing this production plan is fixing a sequence okay and a volume and fixing a volume you're fixing the sequence the first and the second and the third and then you're fixing the the volume okay and you might also recall I don't know okay maybe you uh, were lucky you also recall that we were calculating the epi every part every interval in order to find out how flexible we were with our uh, manufacturing process, right? If we had an EPI of one week or one day or one month and so on. So what we were doing here, we were fixing the sequence frequency Okay, and this is what we do with the green products, okay? We accept no changes and avoid all disturbances in the green stream allotted time okay basically what we do is we're just um, protecting these products from all the rest of the of the shit that's going on in the factory Okay, so we just say from Monday at 6 a.m. until Wednesday at 14 p.m. We only produce this 6% of our SKUs. Which in our example, 6% is about, let's say, the first 24. Okay, so the first 20 something. Okay, if we have... Uh, let me do it. Um, if we have 464 times 6% is 27. Okay? So we have 27 SKUs. Those are the greens. Okay? And if you add it up, turns out it's 47.56%, which is almost 50. Okay? So I'm going to zoom it. Here, okay. So what we do is we allocate some time, we reserve some time, and we do always the same. This is what is called in the business creating economics of repetition. Okay. And why do you think this is good? Why do you think this is good? Any idea?
What was that? Yeah, so in order to get better, you repeat. It's always the same. So everybody in the factory knows on Monday in the morning until Wednesday, 14 p.m., you are always doing the same. So everybody is coordinated and everybody is working on that page. So you automatically get better in the, uh, in the performance. Okay? Any questions so far? No questions. Good. Well, then we continue with uh, this was the green. We continue with the yellow value stream. Um, so these are the products. Um, where there are practical barriers to being able to do every part, every interval. Okay? Things like change over time, batch sizes, ramp up, losses and machine layouts are going to slow us down okay yellow products are the ones to concentrate your Kaizen continuous improvement KVP continuous improvement process or uh, continuous Verbesserungsprozess, uh, your capability improvements on. Okay. What is the tool that we know to implement continuous improvement? Can somebody tell me? <clears throat> yeah, so we use here with the yellow stream, we use CPDNA. Okay, this is our management strategy. We don't use the CPDNA on our cash cow, on the green flow, on the green stream. We, we use this, the Kaizen we use on the yellows, okay? Because there we don't lose so much. It's just uh, still 40% of our, of our business, okay? 45% of our business. But there are a lot more, a lot more stuff going on. So we will know 
up to 50 percent so uh, let's say four six four two three four plus two three two so all these until the all these are gonna be green you can do the numbers later if you want or these are gonna be yellow sorry are gonna be yellow so you will have a lot more volume a lot more SKUs to test and get better and get your data from uh, uh, your testing okay so on that you want to practice CPDNA are we cool something you might want to look at okay will not we will not discuss we are looking here at continuous improvement process Kaizen okay this is a continuous improvement process but you can also combine Kaizen with Kaikaku which means sudden improvement okay this means you close a factory for one week just do improvement you put all the people to work on the improvement process and if you do that and if you do that maybe once every year you do kaikaku combined with kaizen then you get best results okay it's not the same and you don't use for kaikaku you don't use cpdna you use different things so um, yeah any questions on this I, I assume that cpdna is known so I will not explain it again any questions Here in the room, any questions online? No. Well, then I continue with the blue, uh, blue stream. How we call it, right? Blue value stream. Blue value stream. Let's make it pretty. Okay, the blue value stream is about, let's say, uh, to up to 70%. Okay, to 70% of our, um, wait, wait a second, 30, no, I, I want to do it correctly, so uh, 0.33 times 464, it's 153, it's plus 27 we said, it's 180, so I'm just coming here. A little bit too far yeah so that it that'd be better okay so and uh, now we get to the blue and the blue means uh, we are dealing with 29% or all all our SKUs so 134 so w the blue is all the way down to 268 SKU wait I'm missing another page I think so I think we have two ah yeah I have two 
yet because this is also green. This is also yellow. This is yellow. And now this is blue until the 68th. Okay? So I just want you to picture it visually. Do you understand what I'm doing, right? The logic of Pareto is understandable, right? Or not? Tell me. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Well, so these are the blues, the blue SKUs. And what do we do with the blues? Well, we do complexity reduction. Oh, here we, uh, we do what we call in German uh, K, V, E, okay? Or K, V, better. Uh, kombinieren oder verbessern in uh, English combine or improve so there's a uh, here uh, with the blue uh, with the blue products uh, wait a minute Second, please. So, um, so blue category products. Um, our products. Uh, Con containing materials that add complexity yet do not increase customer value okay for instance raw materials where there are only marginal changes in type or grade or packaging items where there are um, Differences that add no value to the customer. You can here ask the question how different do these products need to be? Or uh, can I combine packaging for different country regions? Okay, can I put the the products that go to Germany and France and uh, Poland? Can I put them all together? If I put just the labels in the three languages, or Spain and Portugal, Greece and I don't know, whatever, okay? So what opportunities lie in harmonization of raw and packaging materials in the end? In the end, we want to reduce complexity, 
Okay, so here we want to reducing uh, complexity. <coughs> Limits the opportunities for things to go wrong. and reduces the so-called firefighting. Okay. It also reduces the amount of work required in many areas of the business. So, to, uh, for instance, uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, drives a strategy of uh, massive customization. You can basically customize every, every little shit in the car. Toyota offers you A, B, C, D, A uh, number of cars that it's, it's very limited, way more limited. Turns out that Toyota earns almost five times more money on a Lexus than Mercedes does on an E-Class. Okay? And this is because of this shit. They reduce complexity by looking at the product portfolio. Okay? Uh, yeah, so these are, these are, of course, cultural and uh, managerial decisions, but it just, in the, at the end of the day, uh, cash flow is going to be um, setting your business success, not that you have a lot of uh, products that your customer does not want. Hmm? So here we want to reduce complexity. That's our strategy, and we do that with a customer, uh, with a um, product design. Any questions on this? Okay. So no input. Are we cool? Okay, well then uh, we go to the red value stream. And this is obviously the rest of our products. Okay, so we mark them here. Not a little bit uh, unfuzzy here because something I've done wrong and I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, I think I know what it is. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. 231. I need to redo this. Wait. So the green, the yellow is going to be until the 231. And then the blue is 29%. Uh, so 29.29 uh, 29 times 464 is 231. So to the 365. Sixty-five. 
you know, uh, approximately, and the rest is the red, okay? So what do we do with the red? What do we do with the red? Actually, I'm doing it Shit. Wait a minute. It's five to five. Mm. Five to five times forty four to three one plus thirty one to sixty two. to 62 and then it's again 29 percent plus 262 until 4 to 5 okay Four two five. So that should be okay then. So what do we do with the uh, uh, red products? These are the product. Look, these are the products that is thirty percent of our product range and bring only one percent or less in sales. <laughs> what the fuck do we do with them? First reaction? Kill the customer? Yeah? Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the first reaction is to try to eliminate. Good. That's, that's the third point. You, 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 you can't. Yeah, you can buy them. Okay, you can, you, you could buy them. You could also increase the price. If the customer still wants to buy with that price, it's, it's profitable for me. So I make it profitable by increasing the price. This is what Daimler does, for instance, with the remanufacturing uh, motors. Okay. If you, if you send a motor to the, to the remanufacturing factory. They have all, only a factory just to remanufacture motors. Okay? But it's more expensive. Okay? Not so expensive as a new motor, but it's expensive to repair. Okay? So, um, typically, just 1% of our sales volume comes from 30% of the product range. Okay? Um, then we ask the question, what is the value for the customer? Okay, and what is the value for the organization? And we just have a conversation with the customer. Okay, here we have two strategies. Either increase the price, so increase profitability, or get rid of the product. Hmm? 
two strategies. Okay? So, what do we do the first day in the company? First day in the company, we call some guy, get in the system, SAP or whatever you have, get this list. And then make some Pareto numbers and find out what products are green, yellow, blue, and red. Okay? The second day in the company, you talk to your boss and you say, I have a strategy for all the products. Which looks like green, fixed sequence, fixed volume. And you know how to do it. You have, you have already studied that without knowing. <laughs> you, you already know, okay? Second thing, yellow, you do CPDNA. Third thing, it's a little bit more complicated, the blue, you combine or improve. This means you need to get into the details of the product and see if there are combination probabilities with the packaging or with the raw materials. Third thing, red value stream. You increase profitability, increase the price, or get rid of the product. And you have assured your boss with a strategy that probably he or she does not have. And it, this doesn't matter if you are into, if you're going into uh, Bosch or Daimler, uh, you can also go to Salando and uh, any company that sells a product. It can be also IT. Okay? It's always going to be the same shit. Okay. Are you cool uh, online? Could you follow? So this, this method is a little bit uh, a, uh, let's say, a zusammenfassung uh, of all the things that you have been dealing with in the last years with me. Okay? It puts some, somehow puts everything together into a comprehensive management strategy. Okay? This is why it's so important for, uh, for you, because uh, in, in very few weeks you will be in the industry. Anyway, any questions? Okay, then uh, I hope I see more people tomorrow here in the, in the room as today. I hope you had a nice latte macchiato uh, uh, at the beach, uh, wherever you are. Anyway, have a nice day. Bye-bye.